FAA. He was one of the top people responsible for security at uh, O'Hare Airport. But even a few years when he lived there, he still was able to come back to Virginia State. But at, at some point, it was just uh, unable to do that. So he was number four when there were four of us who'd been at each of these. Uh, but uh, when he was in the uh, Chicago area, he worked with uh, Tom Worley and Alice Stein. And Tom was a very important link to the canine Frisbee community. Uh, in 1991, 92, and 93, uh, Don and his dog bandit were canine frisbee world finalists. Uh, Don was one of the founders of the Windy City Canine Disc Club, the nation's second oldest uh, canine disc club. He performed at many NFL half shows, including Packers and Colts, uh, and uh, countless city events and charity shows, including shows for humane societies and shelters. So Don wasn't just a, a frisbee guy, he was very involved in community uh, at all levels. So. When he moved back to the Washington area, and pretty much his competitive days were over, he and Kelly brought the girls, uh, Kristen, Aaron, and Shannon, and eventually a few sons-in-law, just about every Sunday at Virginia State to see freestyle. Uh, Don really got off more than anyone I know and thrilled to what other people could do with a Frisbee, uh, not just what he could do or what he was able to do at any given time. And, and that was just really cool to see. Um, I had dinner with Don last year at the tournament. He was still in pretty good shape. He, he passed away in August or September, I think. But uh, he talked about all this, and he had no complaints. He had a, a great life. Flying all over the world with Air Marshal Service was one thing, but especially he was so proud of the family that he and Kelly raised, the, the girls, now young women, entering their careers. And he was just so proud of that. And so Bill Lowry, Eric Wood, and I um, have decided to create the Don Kent Memorial Award, Virginia State Tournament Don Kent Memorial Award. And there are three criteria for the award. Uh, the first criteria is that uh, it's awarded to annually. And by the way, Eric and uh, Hugh and I will award this every year as long as there are at least two of us here. And when there's just one of us, you know, as Perry Como once said, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. We'll just let it happen after that. But at this point, It'll be awarded to a person or persons who have been involved with the support or promotion of this sports for a generation or more. That's the first criterion. And I'm going to pass this over to Hugh, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, second criterion, who has an historical relationship with the Virginia State Frisbee Tournament? And Don Kent absolutely had that, forever and always. Um, bringing his dad here and sitting back in the stock room to having one more than his dad thought he ought to have in his, in his last years. But in the early years, he was one of the funnest people to be around. Uh, the first competitive ultimate game against another team I ever played, Don was on the team. In the first tournament, Don was there. In the first Smithsonian, Don was there. Uh, he has just been an integral part of what Frisbee in Virginia, and especially at this place, uh, has always meant. So his historical relationship with the tournament, as well as the world of dogs and family, and Frisbee <laughs> is, is a wonderful thing. We're very proud to commemorate. You know, pass it on to Eric. Uh, the third criteria uh, for the Don Kemp Memorial Award is someone who represents the Frisbee family with honor and integrity. And you can tell from what these two gentlemen have just said that the Don was all of that. He uh, he raised a beautiful family. He was committed to his family and to his sport. Um, and one of the most honorable men I've, I've known, I've had the pleasure to know. He and I did a lot of shows back in the day um, at, at, the, at the Capitol Center uh, and, yeah, for, for the Cosmos when, and uh, what was the Capitol? I can't remember now. Th thank you, the diplomat. Um, anyway, um, I'm going to turn this back over to Phil to, to actually present the award. Uh, we had one nominee this year. Uh, and it was kind of a no-brainer, uh, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Phil to present the actual award. Oh, well, uh, here it is. <laughs> you guys are 
as you know, one of the icons at this tournament is the Shadow Boy. Uh, it just it used to be one of the um, the T markers, and the Shadow Boy just basically casts a shadow. Um, Don's cast a big shadow on this tournament. Uh, the the shadow box that the, that was made by Larry Hinkle uh, is a, a famous picture of Don doing a hoop with Bandit jumping through his hoop. Um, again, we only had one nominee this year, uh, and the 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 winner of the uh, the Don Kent Memorial Award this year goes to our very own Eric Olson. Yeah. read what it says at the bottom. It says it's the Don Kent Memorial Award 20, 2019 Virginia State Frisbee Tournament. Eric Olson at the bottom. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, the bag is what I had my eye on. Um, you know, it's funny. Every four years I have to run for election. I, I hate being in the spotlight. Um, that's what Don Kent was like. Um, I'm so honored to get this. I'm humbled by it. Uh, I'm certainly not deserving of it, but uh, like many before me in the Frisbee community, I accept it with humility. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Okay, uh, we're <clears throat> now <clears throat> making the transition. Uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, last year we had an inductee in the Hall of Fame, but he could not be here. Fortunately, uh, he is here today. So to, to, just to introduce him this year, because we didn't get a chance to do it last year, I'm going to call Steve Goodwin up. Ask Steve, could you come up, please, and uh, say something about our friend Eric Shalom Simon. Yeah. Yeah, where is he? You're worried now, right? Yeah, because I know all the stories and I'm not going to tell any of them. Um, Eric Simon is already well known in the Ultimate World. He's a member of the Ultimate Hall of Fame. Eric's like uh, so many uh, great Ultimate players or Frisbee players. His story starts in New Jersey, leads through Michigan State University. Fortunately for us, landed him in Washington, D.C. And Eric was one of the premier national organizers of ultimate he was the brain that you wanted at every tournament to determine you know who was playing who when all the, the pool play but also to be a real fair arbiter um running captain's meetings uh, settling disputes things like that always the utmost integrity eric was a great motivator of people no one has gotten more people to do more things for him uh, <laughs> than, than eric um and uh, that's just, you know, what can I tell you, Eric? You know, we were housemates, we were teammates, you were a great teammate. And uh, yeah, housemate was okay. But um, I'm happy to introduce you and to help induct you into the Virginia Frisbee Hall of Fame. Come on up. Yeah. I, I, I just did want to add, um, apropos of the John Kent Award, Eric in Washington, D.C., took what Don started, what Eric Knudsen, what Larry Schindel got rolling, and Eric took it and built it into one of the country's largest Frisbee-based uh, organizations. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I really am truly humbled by this. I, I uh, you know, I, throughout my Frisbee career, Virginia State's was... And apparently it still is, now that I see it with my own eyes uh, lately. Uh, the premier best, you know, best events tournaments in the world, as, as well as like a, a living history book. And, um, you know, a lot of you guys were my idols growing up, and, and here you are, you're still playing. It's, it's just unbelievable, just unbelievable. Um, I wanted to just to tell a, a couple of quick stories that, are emblematic of either lessons I've learned or something. I don't know. It'll be entertaining, hopefully. 
So uh, I started because my uh, I had the dumb luck of I just happened to grow up in Maplewood, New Jersey, and uh, Columbia High School was where Ultimate was invented. And everybody always said, "Oh, do you invent it?" I was like, "No, no," but I know, but I knew those guys. And one of them's here, Larry Sindel. Where, where are you? So, uh, yeah. There you are. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to tell one anecdote about that. So we, uh, as I don't know how many people are fluent in the history of Ultimate, we used to play in a parking lot. Um, it's the only place that was open, uh, you know, Friday and Saturday nights from two or three in the morning. We we're still playing. Um, and then when a team would come. Um, a team would show up and they'd, they'd pull up, they'd pull into the parking lot and they'd look around and it's like, well, where's the field? And we're, we'd say, well, you're standing on it. And they're like, no, really, where's the field? And we're like, really, you're standing on it. And they were, they couldn't believe that we actually had planned to play on a parking lot with them. And this parking lot, like most parking lots, um, they had a curb on one side with, with a, with um, telephone poles two feet off the curb. And on the other side, after the curb, it, it sloped down to a rocky stream. And one end zone was about 50 yards wide. The other end zone was about, what would you say, 12 yards wide. It was, it was crazy. That's where we played. And, you know, and we'd get into an argument over where we're going to play the game. And, um, and we'd pull out our whole card and we'd say, are you so closed-minded? You know, it said, look, the back of the Frisbee, right? It, it, Catch, uh, play, catch, invent games. Are you so closed-minded that you're not going to play on this field? Can we even give it a try? Have you ever tried playing a game on a parking lot? They look at us like we were from Mars. Like, what are you, crazy? And the weird thing is that we always thought we, we could win that argument, but uh, we never did. So, um, so we'd have to start from scratch. Now, a, a Team Sierra, we better look for a field. We never really planned ahead. I, I don't know what the deal was that. But that's a common theme. Um, but it was fun in the parking lot, and we had uh, Irv Kalb was down there, and, and he already stopped playing Ultimate, and he was off on the side doing fingertips, and like, what are you doing? It's like, we already invented the best game in the world, Ultimate. What are you doing with these taps? And he's like, <laughs> examining all these things. And uh, then like a year later, he and Stork won a car from Jim Palmieri doing that. Jim Palmieri's here. I guess he knew what he was doing. I'm not sure if Jim Palmer knew what he was doing, losing a car over that. But um, yeah, so I want to thank all the people that uh, invented things. Jim Palmer invented the forerunner of DDC. It's like right here. This is amazing. People invented Ultimate, and as, as, as Steve Goodwin said, we have uh, people like Don Kent and Larry Shindell and Eric Knudsen to thank for the the growth of the uh, uh, the initial growth of the uh, Washington Area Frisbee Club. Um, so I, I wanted to just mention one other story about how far disc sports have, um, have spread. I'm sure everybody has those kinds of stories, but uh, this one's near and dear in my heart because it happened to my daughter. Um, and, and also, it, well, I'll say the lesson afterwards. So in the Orthodox Jewish world, between high school and college, people go to, students go to Israel to study for a year. So that's what she did. So she's studying in this girls' seminary, religious school, and, you know, for most of the people, it's the first time they've been away from home. You know, it's the year after high school. Uh, the, the rabbis who run it want to make sure nobody goes crazy. So there's all these rules about where you can go and, and when, you, uh, when you're allowed to, when curfew is, and all kinds of rules like that. So my daughter is in uh, Ben Yehuda Street, some square in Jerusalem. And she's thrown a desk with some of her friends. There's like three of them. I'm sure everybody's done this, right? You stand in a crowd and you play catch over the crowd and your goal is not to hit anybody. So that's what they're doing. And um, out of the corner of her eye, she sees one of the head rabbis of the seminary making a beeline towards her. So she's panicking. She's thinking, she's running through her mental checklist of all the rules, like, like am I violating one? Like, what, what's, uh, am I in the right spot? It's, Hour is okay. It's, she's like really freaking out. So you have to picture this: the holy city of Jerusalem, this rabbi, right, with a beard and a black hat and a black coat. I mean, the whole thing. You got the scene in mind. So he comes up to her and he says, "Wait for it." He says, "Where did you learn to throw a forehand like that?" <laughs> so uh, the guy played ultimate at Princeton in the in the late seventies. So uh, you know, all right. Um, 
So uh, the reason why I say that is because it's very important, obviously, um, it, to pass everything that, that we know and, and the, spirits that, the spirit that we have onto the next generation. Um, it was great. I was walking by the MTA and somebody called Randy Land's name. And I looked at, at who got up. It's like, that's not Randy. And so, no, that's his son. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, but, you know, the thing, that, the thing about disc sports that we all know is that it's a little bit offbeat. And there's a benefit to that. And, and the best benefit is that you have to go out of your way to find and get involved with it. And what that does is it creates a population of, of very special people that get involved. And uh, you know that, uh, how many scenes in movies where some drunk guy gets up and says, you know, I love you guys, right? That's really what I want to say to you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, really, man, you all are so awesome. And, and the relationship that have had with so many of you over the years is just cannot be replaced. Including, one, I met my wife at a tournament, so especially that one. But uh, you guys are great, Eric Colson, all you guys. Pete, yeah. best sectional coordinator ever in the history of Virginia. There we go. All right. So, like all you guys, it's great. So, thank you so, so very much. Thank you for a mulligan. I know I should have been here last year. Thank you for the mulligan. Thank you for letting me talk so long. So, keep on keeping on. I love you guys. Thank you. Okay, um, before we get going with this year's ceremony, I want to mention uh, one of Duke's incredible creations. This is a Duke and Hugh collaboration. Uh, Duke with his embroidery. Every Hall of Fame inductee gets a uh, embroidered patch. Uh, we have one for each class. So this is class of 2017. Uh, Shalom will get uh, one for his class. Uh, everybody that uh, is around will get their patch. We'll be getting, giving these out shortly. Moving right along, uh, we have four inductees this year. Um, unfortunately, one could not be here. Well, this is actually the um, 30th anniversary this year of his death. He won Virginia State for an unprecedented third time. Um, he was here in April and May. He and his wife uh, were in Mexico on a vacation. Their plane crashed, uh, both passing away tragically and oh so young. Uh, he was a great Frisbee player. He was a great individual. And I'm just going to ask Dale Crawford to come on up and say a few words about our friend uh, and long lost Carl Hendricks. When I heard they were doing a Hall of Fame for Virginia State's, and the first year they didn't include prior, I was like, you know, what's going on here? And then the second year they didn't include prior, and I said, what's going on here? And then the third year they're like, prior's inducted and we want you to speak, and now I don't even know what to say. So um, uh, if I have to talk about prior, and it's going back into this ultimate feel. Prior was an ultimate player in Philadelphia. I met him, I came up as a freestyler, and he took me under his wing, and because I didn't know anything about MTA, distance, golf, and I called him Uncle Pryor. He was, he was my uncle, and he lived life to the fullest. You know, speed limit was 90 for, for Pryor all the time, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> I remember when um, Pryor... He worked at a place called Bryn Mawr Stereo on the main line in Philadelphia. And their whole catchphrase was, because their musical equipment was so great, they sold goosebumps. That's, that was their, their phrase. So he had business cards made that said, Prior Hendricks, professional frisbee player and goosebump salesman. <laughs> he really did. But uh, I remember one time I had a, a horrible lie, and I had no choices. And I said, you know, what do you do here on, on this shot? And he said, throw your least favorite disc as hard as you can. <laughs> That's the way Pryor lived. He, he, he just lived it on the edge, an ultimate player that came up. And, and I think about, you know, the people that raised me. You know, I, I, I started in 82, so um, with, with Pryor Hendricks and Big Daddy, and then most recently losing Don Sauce Kane, they were all, you know, the guys that I looked up to in, in, in the sport. And um, unfortunately, we're losing them. But I'm glad Pryor Hendricks is here. So if you have a beer, raise it up and say Pryor. Pryor! 
just a, a quick clarification. Now, the Virginia Frisbee Hall of Fame, uh, you, one of the criteria is that you had to be either from the Commonwealth or have lived for a significant amount of time in Virginia. And we used to tease Pryor because he would always come in second or third in the overall. And I said, Pryor, you know, the only people who have ever won the overall were native Virginians. So really, if you want to win, you've got to move to Virginia. Well, he did. After being in Philadelphia, he moved to Arlington. And uh, then he won three of the next four overalls. And, uh, and then he, uh, of course, like he said, uh, he, he died tragically with his wife Jane in, in, in Mexico in May of 1989. I'd like to not us forget uh, Jane, Jane Handelsman. She was a wonderful woman. She was his foil. Uh, they were a perfect match. She came from a very talented family. Uh, you probably know her brother Walt uh, is a, um, a political cartoonist. Uh, with, with Newsday, the Times-Picayune in, in uh, New Orleans, a national syndicated political cartoonist. And her other brother, um, Steve, Steve Handelsman, was the main White House correspondent for NBC News. So she was uh, from a very talented family. She was a very brilliant woman, and uh, we miss her too. Our uh, second inductee this year, um, when I asked Lori D Daniels, who would you like to have introduce you? She didn't even hesitate and said, uh, have Hugh Lowry do it. Hugh, coming up, please. Yeah. I won't say what Hugh said when he heard that. <laughs> uh, th there was a glorious... <laughs> there was a glorious period on the Mary Washington campus back when uh, wonderful people were all playing there, especially Eric Wooten, Eric Olson, Paul Hobson, and Burkle, occasionally me, um, Aaron Hart, uh, and Lori moved onto the campus to play, not Frisbee, but found it, and it helped everybody get more interested and have more fun. <laughs> she spent a lot of time Practicing, learning, thinking about it, being a good sport when things didn't go right. And it was always a treat to play frisbee with. Her. And the fact that she just got better and better and better. And I don't know that she should get this as a Virginian because she got better and better after she left. <laughs> Most of us didn't get any better than we were back then. But she did. And so as a Virginian, we're really happy to be able to use that excuse to claim her <laughs> as a Virginia State Hall of Fame. very well. <laughs> Thank you. So Hugh was one of the people who um, was very patient with me. Extremely patient. Just at Old Mill Park, we would go out and he would keep telling me with MTA, know where the wind is, two degrees to the right, throw it up there. And um, as some of you can tell, I'm not naturally athletic. I have to work at everything I've ever done. Educationally, I'm not naturally smart. I've just been really stubborn. Really, really stubborn. And so, so stubborn that 37 years later, I get to stand in front of you and, uh, and accept this award. So when I was 18 years old, um, he was right. Frisbee found me, but actually what they don't know is that I had a heavy flirtation with Frisbee prior to coming to Fredericksburg. Um, I loved playing street frisbee in high school, and just something about the flight of the disc, you all know this, right? And it's just, it, there's something fun about it. And then when um, I was walking to the dining hall one day, I saw two people freestyling in ball circle. Hopefully you read about this in Lazo's Weaning World a few years ago when I captured all of this, but I, um, I was enamored with what they were doing, and in spite of my hunger, I stood there for about five or 10 minutes and just watched them play. 
I also was sitting in front of my dorm when I saw several um, moonlighter discs come flying around the corner of the Mason dormitory and had no recipient and no thrower in sight. These discs just sort of appeared around the corner as I was trying to read my English book. And it was like, what's going on here? And, uh, and then we see a bunch of hippie guys with purses walk around the corner. And that's when I fell in love. That's when I fell in love. I fell in love in that span of time during the, uh, I think it was the fifth Virginia States at the time. Um, probably fifth or sixth year. But anyway, so ever since then, I've never fell out of love. I've been in love with Frisbee and the Frisbee community for almost 40 years. And many of you here, the people at Laszlo's, anybody who's ever partnered with me, and thank you so much for putting up with me. And I have to do an exceptional thank you to Jake Gothier, who is my number one support guy and partner. He's amazing, as you know. But I really want to thank um, just so many people who have just shared the field with me and who I've uh, thrown with, thrown against, thrown around, yeah. all of that stuff. And so um, I got on a plane on Thursday night and arrived on Friday morning uh, from Hawaii. As many of you know, I live there now. And, uh, and I wouldn't have gotten on the plane if it weren't for all of this and everything that gets created year after year here and the hugs, the love, the community. I mean, I've gone as far as Slovakia and down to Medellin, Colombia to play Frisbee. And the community is as beautiful in all of those places um, as it is here, but here it's just a little more special. So um, I have more to say, but you don't have to hear any more from me because I'm preaching to the choir when I say, uh, my heart is filled with aloha and mahalo nui loa. For this, um, I made it through this far without breaking a tear, so I'm going to stop now and just say thank you so much. I'm humbled, and it is an honor. Thank you, Lord. Um, Okay, uh, we have two inductee who is Randy Lamb. I'm gonna ask Jack Cooksey to come on up. Jack. Okay, can everyone hear me? No. No? Oh, you're right in front of the app. Yeah, you can hear me. Um, so Randy and I, I don't remember the exact moment when I first saw Randy, but I was a young junior. What's that? When I was playing PDC against Scott Zimmerman? Okay. So Randy just... <laughs> but, the, but the first time he came on my radar, that's what's important, is um, when we were out here like the kids were doing today, um, it, it was a rainy spring Saturday, and we were throwing distance for measurements, and I thought I was kind of hot stuff, and I really wanted to be... Um, a state distance champion because I thought throwing far was a good thing. And um, then I see that this carload of kids from Northern Virginia shows up. And then there's this really tall, kind of menacing looking guy. Um, we weren't really friendly. We kind of looked across the field at each other, really cross-eyed, um, kind of like, you know, cats getting ready to fight maybe. And, uh, and I, just, I just remember... Um, that I didn't know who this guy was, but I it was immediately intimidated because he was like one head taller than me. Um, and we threw, we threw, you know, our competitive throws. We went through to the finals. And the rumor is, I've heard a rumor that my brother accidentally kicked my disc a little bit farther. Um, and I, I was really nervous. I was back at the throwing line, so I didn't know what was going on out in the field. And uh, and I think Randy was out in the field uh, watching the measurements. And then one of the guys from my, um, from my crew, Steve Jarrett, comes back. And, uh, and I said, so what happened? And he says, well, he says, uh, the tall kid said the twerp one. 
and uh, and so that <laughs> that was that was one of my first um, indirect uh, interactions with Randy. Um, we started as frenemies, right? And um, and before long, within several years, when we were in high school, we became friendly. We got into college, and we were friends. And then by the time I dropped out of college and Randy finished, we were going cross country. Uh, on a frisbee tour across America, um, and I, I can't say I, you know, I could keep going about Randy, but he's been a part of my life since that time when I was about 13 years old. Um, he's been a really important person um, to me, and not just as a frisbee player. He's a really solid dude, you know, and uh, he's just a solid dude. And my time's probably up, so Randy. I think you're supposed to come up here. Yes, you are. So I am a uh, byproduct of Virginia public education. So I, ap I apologize for my poor public speaking skills. Uh, I, I found Frisbee in McLean, of all places. And as, as a wee lad, Growing up in high school, we had a vibrant Allstate community, and it fled right into overall, and we started to lap it up. And then one day, we heard that there was this frisbee tournament down in Fredericksburg, and we said, well, okay. So we loaded up the car with a few buddies, and we drove down for the tournament weekend, and my car broke down. So we had to stay over. And then I said, well, okay, so now we have to go to college. And, and it's funny, but you know, I, I went to Mary Wash, I'm, I'm of the Demawaka uh, variety, but the most important thing I've ever had is family, is family, and this is sports, and very everything. You know, the, the education got me a job and all that good stuff, which is miserable, but the Frisbee is what, uh, it's what's kept me going. It's friends and family, and uh, you know, both figuratively and, and literally. I've got two kids. I've forced them to, you know, enjoy it. I think they do. Um, you know, keep forcing them until they're 18 and, you know, off my taxes. But um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I won't go on too long because I'm really going to have a tournament. But I, I really tried to figure out what the heck the Hall of Fame is all about. And, you know, what's the definition of it? And I never, I never, I haven't yet been able to write it down. Um, but I just think it's the spirit that everyone, everyone here carries inside them for the sport. If you made the effort to come today, you, you have that spirit. And if you've made the effort to come to this for most of your life, well, you've definitely got it. So uh, thank you all. I, I can't say anything more. Okay, uh, thank you, Randy. We have one more inductee. Uh, it's interesting, uh, Eric Wooten actually noted this. Um, we have four inductees this year. Um, uh, so in the prelims in MTA, Jack had five no catches. In the semis in MTA, uh, Randy had five no catches. In the finals of MTA, Lori had five no catches. And of course, Pryor had no catches. Uh, it's a common theme, it happens to everybody. I'm here to introduce our last inductee, uh, one of the humblest Frisbee players that we know. Uh, and No, the inductee. Um, to introduce one of the humblest Frisbee players that we know is our friend Phil Pollock. So I've been playing, I've had the fortune to play with Jack Hooks since he was 12 years old. And I know we're on a timeline, and Eric doesn't want me to tell you everything about Jack because everybody knows Jack pretty well. But, you know, Jack won, if I remember correctly, distance when he was in the ninth grade, or the 10th grade, and the 11th grade, won distance here at Virginia State. Now, eventually, so we have a high school kid winning distance. Eventually, Jack goes off to college. So it's still Jack winning distance sometimes. He's not always a high school kid doing it. But Jack had humble beginnings. So I've been playing with him since he was 12, as I said. 
at some point before he could drive, and I'm guessing he was 13 or 14, uh, Richmond City Public uh, uh, Recreation Department uh, advertised a, uh, a frisbee competition for kids. So it's a sort of a combined uh, throwing and catching and catching with both hands and that kind of thing. Not a, not a big deal. So I took Jack to it, and uh, Jack tied for second in that tournament. So this is where you applaud. Now, they, they stopped now because there were actually only three kids uh, entered into the tournament. So see, Jack came from humble beginnings, and he looks like a natural athlete, but he really did work at everything he did and got everything, uh, earned everything he got. And it's just been a thrill and a pleasure to watch uh, a 12 year old kid go into not just a, a fine frisbee player, but a, a fine young man and getting to be older, actually looking. And so that's enough for me, Jack Cooksey. Okay, um, moment of truth. I, um, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get heavy honest, so just kind of brace yourselves, but the, the good thing is that freestyle comes after this, so, and the sun is shining, so I don't want anybody to, to get, get down about this, but, um, the first thing I will mention is my frisbee started with my brother, Bob. And, um, yeah, I was, I was just a kid. I was like a six-year-old kid. Like, I was one of these guys. And um, I was at home, you know, probably watching TV or something. And it was an afternoon like this. Uh, and maybe late summer. And my brother walks in. And I think he'd gotten a new birthday present. And it was one of those um, perfect uh, super pros uh, with, the, uh, with the bird sticker, the hawk sticker on it. And, um, and he said, um, come with me. And come outside, and then and then he made me throw a frisbee with him, and um, and so it was magic from that point, and that was that was a magic that my brother and I started sharing, and um, a number of years later, I played some sports and I dropped out of sports because I wanted a paper route, you know, I wanted some money, and my friend Fitz and I would throw football because we stopped playing football, we got bored of football, we threw baseball, got bored of baseball, and then Fitz was like, "Do you got anything else?" in your closet and I went rooting around in this old toy box and I had a, a bad frisbee, a Humphrey Flyer. And we threw back and forth and we thought we were hot stuff. We thought, and I remember saying, <laughs> I remember saying to Fitz, man, if there is professional frisbee, we're probably it. <laughs> Like I, I, because we could we could call the throw, we could make a couple of catches, and we thought we were hot stuff. And then my brother shows up one afternoon in front of the house to run in and get his tennis shoes because he and his buddy heard this radio announcement about an ultimate team forming. And uh, and so when Bob ran inside, his buddy let it slip where they were going, and I bugged Bob until. You know, he said, you know, if mom says you can go, then you can go. And I yelled into the house, you know, ah, 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 ah. and mom was like, yeah, whatever. And I, and I went to the YWCA with Bob and um, we walked in this gym and it, it was like 12 year old heaven. There were Frisbees just skipping off the floor and careening off the wall. There were guys throwing thumbers. I had never seen a thumber before. I'd never seen a sidearm, overhand wrist flip skips. And, uh, and it was it was magic again. My brain exploded. And a lot of these guys standing here with me right now, Phil and Peter and Bob and Corey, they were all a part of that moment. They're standing right here with me now. And it's just bizarre because I don't believe um, that uh, I'm old enough to be in a Hall of Fame. And, uh, and I feel like there's a lot more Frisbee that I want to play. You know? Uh, like maybe when I'm 72, I could still throw an MTA record or something. Maybe not, but, but um, Randy said it also. It's just that there's a spirit. And um, so this is where I get a little heavy. You know, I, I, I can say this honestly. Frisbee saved my life. It really saved my life. And um, there were, there, you know, I, my mom died when I was 18, um, and I had a real hard time with that. But I was still around this community, and um, it really lightened my spirit. As deep and dark as I went, um, if I came back to this tournament, um, as deep and dark as I was, I still could only go so far because of you people. 
Um, when, when Randy got married, I was going through a real rough patch, a real rough patch. And, um, I had been in a relationship with a woman. This is brutal honesty here. And, um, and it was fast and furious and it was like a skyrocket to oblivion. And it, and, and then I, I, I cratered, um, and I was, I didn't know what, who I was and what I was going to do next. And, um, and I am not joking when I say I started looking at high places to fall off of. And um, one of those moments was the day that uh, my brother and I and his wife went to Randy's wedding. And we were in the hotel room and I was just wrestling with my depression and Bob was in the bathroom getting ready and I was stressed out. And I looked out, I looked out the seventh floor window and I said to myself, I wonder if this is high enough. I really did that. Um, but what happened is then Bob got ready and they came out and they distracted me and interrupted that whole thought. And we went to Randy's wedding. I sat in the car because I was a nervous wreck. And then we, later we went to the reception. And the reception was great. But after the reception, Hugh and Mary and Brian Meggs and Randy and Dave Taylor and Leona and a number of other people, Dave Breeden. And we all went to a little hole-in-the-wall pool place and got pizza and just hung out and you know, we had community and that really warmed my spirit. That, that saved my life. So I'm not lying when I say that Frisbee saved my life. I do believe that we can get world peace through Frisbee. I still believe that t-shirt, you know. Um, we have something special here. And this is the last thing, I'll finish with this. Uh, I watched, I watched Gary Auerbach a couple weeks ago totally entrance like a, a, a women's ultimate team, a, a college women's Will, ultimate team, Will. by just walking up and, and, and asking if anybody wanted to learn some tricks. And he was doing simple stuff. It wasn't this uh, complicated things that we do, you know. He was doing very simple, approachable, achievable things, and they were totally in. And then I watched Toddy doing it yesterday with a lot of these kids around here. And that is the spirit. Like, that is the spirit right there. It's the future, and it's, it's the spirit. And, and I, I really believe this. You know, I've been able to do a lot of things that impress people with the Frisbee. But when somebody makes a person light up just by doing simple stuff like that, I, that's impressive. That's something I don't know. That's a trick I want to learn. I don't know how to do it yet. But... Um, I, I'm grateful for this honor. It's really, it's, it's, it is humbling, but um, I'm really grateful. Thank you very much. Okay, um, what, a great, what a great vibe we got going here. Uh, now we're going to play some Frisbee. Freestyle finals starting right now. Let's get the field set up. If you know how to judge freestyle, we need freestyle judges.